Okay, this is problem 11-129. Let's see, it's on page 491. A nozzle discharges a stream of water in the direction shown with an initial velocity of 25 feet per second. And the angle is uh, with respect to vertical 50 degrees. Determine the radius of curvature of the stream A as it leaves the nozzle and B at the maximum height of the stream. So please refer to the figure on page 491, but I will draw it for you here as well. Let's take a little more space. So there's a scissor lift of some type to uh, raise the nozzle. And the nozzle basically just, I guess there's a pump sitting on top. Anyway, the nozzle discharges at an angle of um, 50 degrees to vertical. And so here's our initial velocity. Of course, the water stream is going to uh, fly through the air with uh, projectile motion, basically. Uh, it'll have a maximum here, and it leaves the nozzle there. And the question is, what's the radius of curvature at those two points? So we're supposed to find the radius of curvature at the nozzle of the stream, of course, and the radius of curvature at the max height. Okay, so here's our solution. At the nozzle, I'm given to find the solution. At the nozzle, notice that the initial velocity, V naught, makes an angle with respect to vertical of theta, which is 50 degrees. I'm just going to use theta so I don't have to write 50 degrees over and over again. Now, of course, the water at that point will have an acceleration downward of just g because it's in free fall. So that will be its acceleration. Well, then the, what that means is the normal acceleration would be a component of g. Because notice, normal acceleration is always at a right angle to the tangential velocity. Well, the, the tangential velocity is just the initial velocity as it leaves the nozzle. So where is the angle theta? Well, here's a vertical line. Here's a line parallel to the initial velocity. So here's the angle theta. So what that means is that the normal acceleration is equal to g sine theta. And so the initial velocity squared divided by the radius of curvature is equal to the normal acceleration. So the radius of curvature is just the initial velocity squared divided by the normal acceleration. That's just the initial velocity squared over g sine theta. So there's our equation for the radius of curvature coming out of the nozzle. So plugging in the numbers, this is 25 feet per second, which needs to be squared, of course, divided by 32.2 feet per second squared, sine of 50 degrees. When you plug all that into your calculator, you'll find that the radius of curvature is about 25.33, let's round it off, 25.3 feet or so. Of course, notice the units are feet because the second squared go away and feet squared over feet would just be feet. So there's the radius of curvature where the water leaves the nozzle. Now what about at the max height? What's the radius of curvature there? Well, here's the key to figuring this part out. Notice that the initial velocity at angle theta from vertical has a component of velocity in the x direction. Now, the acceleration that acts on the particle is just g throughout the entire flight. It doesn't matter where it's at. The acceleration of gravity acts downward. That is the, or the force of gravity acts downward. And so the acceleration of the stream is just 32.2 feet per second squared. But um, the velocity in the x direction, there is, there are no forces in the x direction. Of course, we're neglecting any wind resistance or anything like that. Um, and so the velocity in the x direction is just constant. So if we could calculate the magnitude of the velocity in the x direction, which we can, is just v naught sine theta, then that would be the velocity at uh, the max height. Because notice at the max height, the velocity of the water is only horizontal. Okay, it's just lost all of its vertical velocity. It's about to to gain negative vertical velocity, but right now its velocity at the height is just Vx. 
And that is the tangential velocity because that velocity is tangent to the path. And so the normal acceleration at the maximum height would just be equal to g, right? Because, once again, at the maximum height, since this uh, acceleration of gravity is perpendicular to the tangential velocity, well then that's just the normal acceleration. But that's just vx squared over rho from the normal to tangential velocity relationship. So rearranging the equation, we find that the radius of curvature at the max height would be vx squared over g. Plug in in numbers, <coughs> that would be, nine, oh I'm sorry, I didn't write it down. <coughs> this comes out to 19.15 uh, feet per second or so. I didn't round it off in my calculator. Um, so when I actually took 19.15 feet per second squared, it was a bit more accurate than what I've got on the board. But anyway, we've got to divide by g, 32.2 feet per second squared. And so, again, the units cancel except for feet, and you'll get about 11.4 feet for the radius of curvature. Now back here, this is just the initial velocity of 25 feet per second multiplied by the sine of 50 degrees to get that 19.15. Um, so the radius of curvature at the maximum height is less than the initial radius of curvature, which makes sense intuitively because the uh, stream has slowed down. It's lost its y component of velocity. And so just intuitively looking at the equation, it would make sense that the radius of curvature would be less, even though the normal acceleration well, and in addition to the fact, the normal acceleration has increased, which would also drive down the radius of curvature.